Hi guys, so in today's video I wanted to cover how you can attach additional pieces of data to line items on your Shopify orders. And so this can come in uh, useful if you are offering some sort of customization that you don't want to create additional product variants for, or if that customization doesn't necessarily fit well into a product variant, uh, this could be useful as well. Um, so this is actually a front-end customization and in doing research for this video I could not actually find that much information about implementing this So hopefully you guys find this video useful and without further ado, let's get right into it Alright guys, so the way that we're gonna be going about doing this is adding what Shopify likes to call line item properties uh, or additional line item properties to um, your products form field so if that didn't make any sense, um, let me explain this a little bit further. So you can see here that in our uh, site's code, there's this form uh, element here that is on every product page. So what this form does, um, if you don't know anything about HTML forms, is it's going to wrap up every single input field in here, all the different values, and it will submit them to this endpoint here. And that, that of course, it does that when you click either of these submit buttons. So Basically, um, we're going to be adding input fields here. So to do that, um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll just use the online store editor and give you a brief overview here. So um, if you haven't already, I would recommend duplicating your theme and instead of working on the live version, uh, work on the duplicate uh, just in case, you know, uh, you add something and it pushes live and so you don't want your customers to be seeing uh, the stuff while you're working on it obviously or if you mess something up it's nice to have a backup so uh, but once you've done that go ahead and click edit code we're gonna be working uh, at first we're gonna be working in this down in the sections folder in the main product.liquid file here so um, I want you guys to go and navigate down to around line um, 425 here in the file and if you've previously edited this file it's obviously going to be you know slightly different than line 425 but the thing that you're going to be looking for is this form uh, liquid statement here so once you find a line that appears like this um, I want you guys to go ahead and, and uh, underneath this input field here let's go ahead and just to make sure that we're actually in the right place we can type uh, this line here, which is basically creating a P element. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And once it's done saving, uh, it'll let me know. And then I can go ahead and refresh here. And you'll see that I have this um, test P tag here. And so now we've, we've proven that we're in the right place. All right, guys. So let's think of a potential um, use case for this now that we know that we can add to this uh, area here and we can add to this form so let's say you're selling jewelry or something and on your site and you want to add a custom uh, you want the the customer to be able to add uh, their name to the line item so that uh, when you print out the jewelry maybe you can engrave their name on it or something like that um, so what you could do here is you could go ahead and first we want to put a label here and we can say this is for uh, cust name and in the label we're gonna put um, your name here and then we'll close the label tag and so then we're, we're gonna enter the input and this is where the actual magic happens so we want this to be of type uh, text because uh, that's gonna give the customer a text field where they can enter the name uh, and what we want is maybe we'll make the ID cust name like this and then for the name, what we want to do is we want to have this, uh, this is important here, it needs to be properties like this, and then some brackets, and let's just say this is custom uh, name, like that. And we're gonna go ahead and save this. So, this is saved. Now what you'll see is we have this your name here and I can enter in anything here. So let me go ahead and enter in Bob Smith or something and go ahead and hit add to cart. The cool thing about a lot of these themes is they already actually have this functionality built in to different parts. Um, they're just waiting for you to actually put it into the actual product page here. So what you'll see is that now uh, we've added this Ape One product and we have custom name 
of Bob Smith here. And if I go to my cart, what you'll notice is um, these two products I'd added earlier without the custom name field or custom name property. And so you'll see that they're actually listed as separate uh, line items here. And this product is listed as a um, as separate and it has the proper custom name field here. So let me go ahead and, and delete these products and show you that we can actually even add, and if instead of saying Bob Smith, we do like Carol uh, Smith here and add this to cart, you'll notice that again, it's added as a new product here. So the customer can actually see, okay, I'm adding this product with this custom uh, property here. So um, let me uh, actually show you on the back end what this is gonna look like when the order comes in. All right guys, so here I am in the checkout and what you'll notice is that again, we have these line items here and there's custom name field here. And so um, let me go ahead and show you guys actually in the, um, let me go ahead and show you in the actual code here uh, how you can use these in your liquid if you, uh, so desire. For instance, if we go to main cart items, I think it'll have it here. So let's wait for it to load and then we'll search for property. Let me search for property here. Yeah, so what you'll see is um, here, this is um, akin to, give me one second, let me just go back to my cart. Uh, cart here. So this, this here, this for property and items.properties, obviously this liquid is just looping over each property, the custom property that's been added. So here you have property.first and you have property.last, okay? So property.first is gonna refer to whatever, um, whatever text you entered after that um, properties, like in the brackets in the properties. So you can see we did custom name and so this is property.first here. Property.last is what the user input was or whatever the value was of the input field. And um, you can use a bunch of different uh, HTML input types for these things. If you don't know about all the different HTML input types, um, type in W3Schools and then just type in HTML input types and it will tell you about this. And, um, you know, I'd have also check out this HTML forms here if you're really going to start getting into uh, customizing your forms, just so you understand sort of what's going on. Um, because, you know, we could do, you know, like an hour long video on expanding upon these topics. But anyways, um, so yeah, property.first is whatever you entered in the uh, code of your site. Property.last is going to be whatever the user enters as far as the value or if you hard code in the value yourself, it'll be that as well. Um, and so this here, uh, the reason this line exists is uh, Shopify or the Dawn theme basically assumes if uh, the property.last contains this like slash upload slash that you're using some sort of link and then instead of actually just displaying the property with a P tag or whatever, that it assumes that you want to actually link, uh, display the link and allow users to um, go to that link. So yeah, so you can see that these themes, like most of the free themes, maybe even all the free themes that Shopify offers already have some support for these custom properties in them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and complete the order and then I'll show you what this order is gonna look like in the back end when it comes in and what you're gonna see when your customers actually submit orders using these custom fields. Okay, so here I am in the back end and what you'll notice is uh, right here, you can see that it's actually um, kept this custom name field and you can see that it has Carol Smith here, Bob Smith for the other one. And so when you go to fulfill these items, um, you know, if we're using the jewelry example, you're gonna have this piece of data here to draw from so that you actually do the engraving properly. So the other thing that I wanna show you guys really quickly is if I go ahead and hit the API here with a request, um, you'll see that, so now we have this order, uh, and this is anytime you know, you're know you using their REST API, this is the object you're gonna get. So we have this order here, and what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and look at um, if I can find Bob Smith anywhere in here. 
And so what you notice here is this line item has a, uh, under the properties, uh, its first property is the custom name and it has this value of Bob Smith. So this is just to show you that even if you are gonna use the API or something and you're gonna integrate it with whatever other piece of technology, um, you can definitely still use this method and you're still gonna have that piece of data and everything's gonna work. So guys, that's how to add additional pieces of data to your Shopify orders. And so I haven't checked every single one of these input uh, fields here uh, to see if this works with all of them, um, but it, it definitely works with the main ones. And um, yeah, so if you guys found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like. Um, it helps other people find the video who are having the same issue as you. And if you're interested in you know how to code Shopify sites or how to uh, improve the quality of your Shopify site, um, definitely consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I post videos here uh, like this one. I also do app reviews and um, just give some general e-commerce advice uh, for new Shopify store owners. So if that appeals to you, uh, go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video, guys.